Okay, good morning. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. We're talking tax with Tom this morning. That's Tom Yamachika, President of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We're, we're talking about uh, acronyms today. We'll, we'll be discussing acronyms, and I'll make him tell you uh, what those acronyms uh, stand for. The first one is in the title of our show. It's TANF, T-A-N-F, hoarding. Oh, this is hoarding and tax and whatnot. Uh, good morning, t Tom. How are you? Morning, Jay. Glad to be here. So the title of our show is TANF Hoarding, and we have a bunch of other acronyms. Uh, maybe you can take a moment and give us uh, the acronym environment of our discussion. Sure. Um, one of the ways our government provides a safety net for those less fortunate is through a program called Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. That's what TANF means. Um, you may have heard of a federal matching program called AFDC or Aid to Families with Dependent Children. That's what the program used to be. It used to be welfare, okay? Uh, but in 1996, AFDC, which is a federal match, was, re was replaced by TANF, which is a block grant program. And that's going to be very important in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, in the discussion that's going to follow. Okay, well, then you have to tell us what MOE is. The MOE is another acronym we're likely to encounter in this discussion. What is that? Okay, so let me explain how this works. Um, I, I mentioned that TANF is a block grant program. So what that means is the federal government provides uh, a certain amount of money authorized to the states. It's about $100 million a year. And uh, that is then made available to the states so they can run their programs that are consistent with the federal goals. So, uh, but not only uh, are the states supposed to spend the federal money to achieve those goals, they're supposed to spend their own money too. And that's what MOE, uh, uh, that's where MOE comes from. MOE means maintenance of effort. So, uh, the feds expect the states uh, to spend MOE monies uh, and have their own skin in the game, not just the federal money. And again, uh, it always used to be that way. Uh, under AFDC, it was a matching program so that the states had to spend their own money before the feds would kick in. Now, uh, the states get a block grant, but they still have to spend uh, a certain amount of money. And, and the certain amount of money uh, is based on uh, a, a historical, I think it's 1994, um, level of spending on their uh, welfare and other, other homeless programs. Mm. The comment on that is <clears throat> 1994 might have, have well been 1500. I mean, that's a long time ago. Um, if that's uh, supposed to be uh, informative about what's going on now, it's a long way off, isn't it? Right. But it still means that we have to spend about 100 to $150 million a year. And let, me, let me show you on a graph, and this is uh, graph number one, what we actually do spend. See, on, the, on this graph, uh, the blue represents the amount of federal money that we spend, and the, and the orange represents the amount of state money. So... Uh, the, the maintenance of effort level is around $150 million. And that's what we spend pretty much every year. Uh, and we're authorized about $100 million a year uh, from the federal government. So we can spend uh, that money, uh, again, to, to further the goals of the federal program. And, and, they're, and they're very broad goals, OK? Um, assisting needing families so children can be cared for in their own homes or the homes of relatives, reducing the dependency of needy parents by promoting job preparation, work, and a marriage, preventing pregnancies among unmarried persons, and encouraging the formation and maintenance of two-parent families. So, I mean, th those are pretty broad goals, right? Well, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you do that? Uh, good question. So uh, you can do it by by block, block grants to people. You you can, um, uh, you know, after they've you know proven that they uh, are you know able and willing to work, but uh, are are kind of uh, unable to for one reason or another. Um, you can have uh, educational programs. You can have uh, employment services. 
uh, like job coaching and placement, you know, all that, all that stuff counts. Okay. But the issue that we're going to be talking about today is, well, we're authorized for a uh, hundred million dollars a year, roughly, but look how much we're actually spending. So, so let's go back to that first graph and you see the blue bars there uh, hover around, you know, 50, 60 million dollars a year. Okay. Uh, and I, and I mentioned that we're authorized for about a hundred million dollars a year. Now, uh, what happens to the amount that we don't spend? Well, it gets carried over. And that brings us to my second graph, which shows the unobligated balance uh, of the federal monies uh, that is available to the state of Hawaii. What do you mean unobligated? What does that mean? That means it's sitting around in some federal account, earning interest for the feds and not doing anything for us. Because we haven't done our matching. No, it's it has nothing to do with matching. We have to. I mean, I mean to, the MOE. I'm talking about the MOE. We have to spend our maintenance of effort, which we've yeah. done, because you know, if we if we don't do that, we don't get anything, right? Um, so, so have we spent sufficient MOE to justify getting the whole hundred million? Right. Have we? we? Have. Yes, we yeah. have. Okay. Um, because they're 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 very you know very substantial penalties if we if we don't make the MOE, but. Uh, what's been happening here is that the balance has been building up and building up and building up so that in uh, 2021, as Hawaii News now reported, we have crossed the $400 million mark of money that is available to the state of Hawaii, but is sitting somewhere else. Help me on this. Why is it not being distributed to the state of Hawaii? because we didn't ask the feds for it. Okay. It's just a matter of a request then. Yeah, no, what, what, we, what we have to do uh, is we have to come up with programs that meet the federal guidelines. Uh, we basically have to, um, you know, start spending the money and ask the feds to, uh, to, to reimburse it, uh, to reimburse uh, the, uh, the monies that we've spent. That doesn't sound like rocket science to me. Of course not. Um, see, the, the, the problem is we need to come up with programs and we need to do something about making them work. Now, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the base story uh, on, on this, you know, that, that led to you know, today's uh, discussion uh, was uh, basically found out by a, a national nonprofit called ProPublica. Okay, they they um, uh, they investigated several states, and they found that a lot of money was being built up and hoarded, um, and 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 primarily uh, uh, Hawaii, uh, Tennessee, and Maine, hoarding the most pe uh, cash per person, uh, living at below at or below the federal poverty line. So, we hoard. We are hoarding about three thousand uh, dollars per person living in poverty, and and that three thousand dollars is is uh, you know sitting in some bank on the mainland uh, that we don't have access to unless we you know um, tell the feds hey we you know we want it, we want to do it on this program. And Let me see if I got this right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they give us the money. Um, we're supposed to develop programs in those certain areas, those mission areas you, you read off. Um, and um, uh, we, if we don't develop the program, we just keep the money. We hoard the money. That's um, right. And, uh, and there's this, this going to be a price to pay for that down the line, uh, maybe in the way of penalties or um, something about you know, future distributions from the federal government. Am I right so far? Uh, up to the last part, it's not really clear what the penalties are, uh, but uh, in practical terms, you know, we, we, we have $50 or we have, uh, you know, $100 million uh, that, that the feds have authorized for us. We're spending 50 of it. Um, we're supposed to use the other 50 to alleviate poverty in Hawaii, and we're not doing it. Okay, so the, the next question 
is is uh, who is supposed to do that? We are the Department well, who, of Human Services. Who? I mean, the Department of Human Services, DHS here in Hawaii. That's correct. A state agency. And um, are they aware of this? I mean, did ProPublica contact them? Probably did, eh? They um, did. And they know the problem. Um, they've probably known about the problem for a long time. Uh, how come they didn't develop these programs? Well, uh, when they replied to ProPublica, they said they have a lot of ideas. Oh, let's um, extend employment services like job coaching and placement for non-custodial parents who have children receiving TANF. And we want to provide diaper assistance to, to families that are eligible for the program. And you know they're also considering increasing benefits and offering monthly housing assistance. Well, uh, those are a lot, there's a lot of thoughts, right? There's been no action. This is over a period, what was that chart cover? Five or six or seven years, something? Uh, the chart covers, I believe, five years. Five years. Um, but it, it, it goes back, I think, a bit further than that. Um, let me, but let me, let me uh, offer you this thought. Some of those missions that you read off, and maybe you could read them off again, those missions are pretty vague. As you said, they're very broad. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <clears throat> it seems to me that it's really hard. Just my reaction is it's very hard to establish programs that uh, accomplish very vague purposes because you don't know where to, you don't know where to put the money. You don't know who to hire. You don't know what, you know, what kind of functions you want to establish or cause a contractor to establish. And so it's uh, you're, you're well. I mean, I, I would I would beg to differ. You know, with the with the with the broad goals like that, it's easy to establish something because okay, so it's, let's, it's, let's, it's tougher to say it's not going to qualify. And these are these are um, missions that are, I mean, they're rebuilding the family, they're rebuilding lives. They only apply to people who are in poverty, uh, people whose families are broken in some way people whose health is broken in some way. I mean, they're really for the disadvantaged. That's, that's clear. Yeah. Um, now, now the, the, the excuse uh, that DHS has given is, oh, geez, well, this is a matching program. And, um, uh, you know, there are, there's, there's stuff that we have to provide for uh, that can't, uh, that's not eligible for federal matching. Like when they, um, you know, provide for immigrants from the compact of free association states, right? The, you know, the uh, uh, Palau truck and, and uh, Micronesia. Why does that not qualify? Because you have to be a U.S. citizen. Okay. okay. But, um, but the problem is it's not a federal matching program. It hasn't been since 1996. Okay, and if their thinking, if their mindset is, well, we can't spend any more because, you know, um, we need the legislature to authorize us to spend more, that's just wrong. Um, what, what, uh, what, why do you say they can do it without legislative imprimatur? No, they, they have their own budget, okay, but uh, when, when, they, when they budget, this is, this is going to be from federal funds, you know, it's, it's going to be um, whatever symbol that is, uh, but, but it's not a funds. A funds are, is from our own tax dollars. You know, the thing is that uh, they probably have a lot of programs already, right, in, in the, the, say, the 50 million they're spending. And they, and they probably have other programs, too. I mean, this isn't the, the you know, the, the full coverage of DHS. They do a lot of stuff. They do yeah, a lot of they, stuff they spend one hundred and fifty million dollars of our money, yeah, and right. fifty million dollars of the feds. Yeah, okay. So, so, so they, so yeah, they if have, they have a, a program programs. for the hundred, if they have a program for what did you say, a uh, hundred million, say, uh, of of our money, state money, hundred fifty million, yeah, hundred and fifty million for our state money. They have various programs and and all addressing problems for the disadvantaged and the and the poor. Um, okay, now you now you say, well, you need to spend another what fifty million beyond what you spent um, um, already out of the federal money. 
uh, they really have to find new programs, don't they? They have to find new ways, new or you know, new organizational ways to spend that money. They can't be spending it on what they're already spending it on, right? Right. So, so that so, requires so think, a little creativity. Yeah, yeah, it requires some brain damage there, you know. <laughs> you have to actually use those brains uh, to come up with ideas. And and actually implement, them, not just you know put the ideas down on paper. Eh, maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do that. So you're saying that they can do this without uh, legis legislative approval? I suppose they have some relationship with the governor's office on this. I mean, they work for the governor. They're a state department and all that. So well, what, course, what's yes. what's the bureaucracy involved? What's the bureaucracy that that, that has them give you vague answers or give uh, ProPublica vague answers? Um, and and not do anything. What, what, why is this stuck? Um, it, it, it seems to me that if the money's hanging on a tree out there, they can just you know it's low hanging fruit. All they've got to do is think of something. Right? Yeah, that's 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 why we're having this discussion today, Jay, uh, because I think there is low hanging fruit. Uh, I I don't think they can hide behind the excuses that oh we got to spend more state money because that's not true. They just have to come up with you know, uh, ideas uh, and the implementation of it. What about uh, putting more money into existing programs? In other words, if they find a, a pro can you read that list of the mission, mission points again so we can talk concretely? Sure. Um, states can use the, the, the TANF and state MOE dollars to meet any of the four goals set out in the 1996 federal law, which are, assisting needy families so children can be cared for in their own homes or the homes of relatives, reducing the dependency of needy parents by promoting job preparation, work, and marriage, preventing pregnancies among unmarried persons, and encouraging the formation and maintenance of two-parent families. Okay, so there must be, the, oh boy, that sounds like it's really elusive, actually. Uh, there must be programs that are within the state budget that at least touch some of those things. Why can't uh, DHS, and then we're talking today about DHS, that's what it's about. Why can't they just take an existing state program and put the federal money in it? Does this have to be a brand new program unrelated to existing state programs? Well, that, that part I'm not sure about, but um, uh, I, I think the way it works is the states have to come up with the program. They have to spend the money, and the and they ask for a reimbursement check from the feds. Okay, and um, it has to be within the you know the authorized limits of their block grant, which you know, and we we know that they're already authorized for it. Um, like you were saying before that it's cumulative. So if they're say four hundred million dollars behind in making their requests. Uh, they can make lots of big requests and get four hundred million dollars now. Is that the way it works? I believe so. Yeah. So we're we're losing ground, but we're not we're not losing the prospect of taking that money for other projects. So it's a matter of DHS waking up on this and and frankly establishing huge and ambitious pro, pro um, you know projects uh, right now and doing enormous work with four hundred million dollars. Uh, to help the disadvantaged in our state. And we all know from the newspapers that, that there are many disadvantaged living below the poverty line in our state um, that we could help a lot with $400 million. So what is their excuse actually for not building the, the programs and not asking for the money? Is Did they ever advance an, an excuse of any meaningful uh, sort uh, to ProPublica? Uh, not to ProPublica, but when they, when Hawaii News now covered this same uh, covered this same topic, they they said, well, you know, we 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 have to uh, you know expend monies for you know COFA migrants. That's the Compact of Free Association States, um, and we. That's, and, that's not an answer. Well, and and their again their excuses, um, you know, they need more appropriations from the state. Uh, to go out and spend the money, uh, and uh, and that's the, not an answer. And, and they and they quoted uh, Ryan Yamane, 
who is, I think, the chair of the House Health Committee uh, or Human Services Committee, and 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 he said, well, geez, um, there's there's a lot of requests for more money this year. But that that I That's think not is not the answer. point. They yeah, have four hundred million dollars of low hanging fruit. They do. That's my that's my point. They don't have to spend more state money. They they they, they just have to come up with a program, uh, make a dent in our in our homeless crisis or or you know our poverty crisis, um, and you know pull that money down from the feds. It's not doing anything for us if it's stuck in the federal agency doing nothing. Well, we scrimp and we save. We have such trouble with, uh, you know, state revenues and the diversification of the economy. And we worry about every penny. And we've been so careful in COVID. And here's $400 million that they're not spending. Um, where's the governor on this? I mean, he's, they work for him. I don't know. I don't know what the governor's uh, position on it is. He, I don't think he's made that known yet. I mean, is, is there something I'm missing here, Tom? What, you know, what is it for a position? They have the money. That's federal law. They have the money, and they're not doing anything with it. Well, I think it's 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 too much work for them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, you know, if they gave you uh, $10 million to tell them how to do it or me, hmm, we could do it. I know we could. And then that would leave $390 million to spend, wouldn't it? Yeah, it sure would. <laughs> I, you know, this has happened in the past, hasn't it? I, I don't know if you can pull a, an example out of your memory, but I, I recall in general that we have often left uh, money, federal money on the table. And, yeah, uh, it happened with the de uh, Department of Hawaiian Homelands. It happened with Department of Transportation. We were we were actually in, in danger of losing federal monies because, oh, uh, what you guys are doing with the monies that we authorized? Well, we didn't do anything with it. Oh, well, I guess you don't need it then. <laughs> what about the state auditor? Seems to me that the state auditor could look into this and and uh, find not only in DHS but but other agencies where they're leaving the low hanging fruit. Oh, they, and, he did, he yeah. did. You know, he he came up with a report I think in the in the summer of 2020 uh, where he looked at the question of well, uh, do we have unobligated balances sitting in you know state accounts somewhere? And he listed a whole bunch of them. And I think he found like seven or eight hundred million dollars. Um, it's scandalous. I'm sorry. Yeah, my, and my, my point, uh, you know, to the legislature has been, look, you know, before you come to us taxpayers for more money, spend the money that you have. Why can't you spend the money that you have? Well, there's, but it's, if I appoint you and you get confirmed by the Senate, you know, as a director of an agency that is absolutely responsible to take down um, you know the low-hanging fruit take the money and you don't do that that's scandalous yeah I, uh, I believe that's right and so uh, what what's the remedy of the public um first of all i mean it, it sounds like letters ought to go out from the public to the officials involved at, at dhs and the other agency uh, and to the governor what are you guys doing we pay you to handle this. And there are you know, all these high-priced executives in government who ostensibly could get in there and you know, make this happen, but they don't. And as a result, we think about it. We, the taxpayers, are covering the shortfall, aren't we? Of course we are. Hmm. Well, that's the plain and simple truth. Suppose, any, any, uh, any shortfall that you know comes up in government operations, guess who's got to pay for it? When I think of uh, you know all the bish bash over the state budget and the Council on Revenues and the possibility of tax increase, the reality of tax increases and all that, and then I think of all this Christmas tree full of money, um, I just don't understand it. So what does an ordinary taxpayer do? Uh, to make his will known. What does an ordinary tax uh, payer do to woke this up? Well, what an ordinary taxpayer can do is, you know, 
do some phone calling, you know, talk to uh, your elected representative. Uh, you know, your, your district is represented by somebody, let them know what your concerns are. Okay, even though you can't go into the Capitol, you can still, you know, call or email um, and, and hopefully uh, get some traction at least, uh, you know, with, with the, the office staff, if, even if you can't talk to the elected official himself or herself. But, uh, you know, this is, this is a problem. I think it, it does demand attention. And um, uh, now I think is a very good time to do it because the legislative agencies, or the, I'm sorry, the legislative committees are in the process of grilling the departments and agencies over how much money they're going to spend in the coming, uh, in the coming fiscal biennium. Hmm. Well, but the budget well, hearings are now, man. So now's a good time to, to bring some of this stuff up. Are we missing something? I mean, it seems, it seems like there's a whole state apparatus out there with this head in the sand. Um, do, do they have the, the slightest reason to defend this inaction? Uh, like I said, what they, what they have been telling people, and, and they, they told it to Hawaii News Now, is, you know, we, um, uh, we can't afford the additional money to, uh, you know, to pull down the, fed, the federal match. But, but, I, but I say again, this is not a matching program. It hasn't been since 1996. Get your, you know, uh, get your desk books updated or something because, you know, some somebody should have gotten the memo that that we got block grants now and and not uh, and not matching programs. So they just don't know. They, they they haven't kept up. That's 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 what I think. Yeah. Well, Tom, I, mean, I, I want them to prove me wrong. Okay. Yeah, well, let me, you know, I, I hereby invite them, the uh, department heads and the governor, come on and tell us if, if we're missing something here. Because what it, it certainly seems like is that um, we're, we're throwing away hundreds, many hundreds of millions of dollars uh, that can inure to the benefit of the state the state agencies, the, the state effort to help the homeless and the poor and the disadvantaged. And, uh, you know, I, I may never read an article about the homeless and the poor and disadvantaged without thinking of this discussion with you today. Uh, well, we should invite them to come on. We hereby do invite them to come on and the governor and explain if we're missing something. Because, you know, in the absence of a good excuse, there is no excuse. There you go. Well, Tom, th thanks for bringing this to our attention. I think it's very valuable that there be a gadfly like you and the Tax Foundation uh, to bring this to the attention of the public. And I hope the word gets out and somebody looks into this, especially now, as you say, in the context of uh, these various hearings and uh, various committees around the legislature. Somebody should be asking about this. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on your show. Thank you, Tom. Tom Yamachika, President of Tax Foundation of Hawaii, enlightening us on what goes on, enlightening us on what the, what the fiscal policies are, and in this case, the fiscal failure is in the state of Hawaii. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a public service for sure, Tom.